Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper, doing a video that's very important, especially for newer homesteaders or newer people getting poultry and stuff like that. You're probably gonna hear some guineas and some roosters. <laughs> Told you, some roosters in the back of this video. Hopefully, that's not too much for you. If it is, maybe don't get poultry. But there's a lot of chicken news going on right now, and chickens are like, you know, the most popular homestead animal, the most popular farm animal, the most likely thing people are gonna have because they'll give you eggs and they'll give you meat. And a lot of people like to have them. That's why a lot of places in the cities, they're, they've forced them out over the decades. Places used to be able to have them, you're not allowed to anymore. A lot of HOAs don't allow them. And then even, I guess there's some rural HOAs that don't allow them. So there's a war going on with chickens. There's a lot of stuff in the news about it right now. But there's something I'm gonna bring up in this video that especially for newer poultry keepers, people thinking about homesteading, people thinking about having chickens, or if you just got into it, especially this last year or two, you need to realize this just to kind of help you through this. So for some years off and on, the avian flu, bird flu has been a thing. A lot of people are worried about that when it comes to their animals. Um, there's actually, you know, the USDA going in and taking out entire farms sometimes. I mentioned a video previously, if I can find the link, I'll put it here um, from last year. But even like 4-H, a lot of times you can get chicks from 4-H for cheap or sometimes even free and then your children can raise them up and then they're supposed to bring them to the fair but before they're allowed to the fair now you got to have them tested and there was some stuff going on last year where if yours test positive they've got to kill all yours and then go for a six mile radius and kind of test or eradicate and eliminate everyone else around you so I'm like man I don't want to play that game at all and one of the sad parts too is you know they'll gladly come in and take out all my poultry if something tests positive but if there's you know a hawk in that tree over there or a bald eagle flying over there those ones we don't have to worry about taking out right just really interesting isn't it then now there's different um, articles going on too about not only just unhealthiness of keeping poultry but eggs causing blood clots and things like that so they're really putting out a lot of information to really try to dissuade people from taking matters into their own hands they're saying yeah Oh, they are nice and warm, but you know, big danger eggs, those are gonna cause blood clots, these are a threat to your family, you might not wanna have your own, get the ones from the store where no chicken was involved. And then you've got people connecting dots with uh, like chicken feed and looking at big egg producers like Land O'Lakes, seeing how they're in cahoots with Purina, and Purina, you know, a bunch of feed, so you're like, wait a minute, if you're putting out the eggs, and you're also supplying the feed for others that are in competition with you because I'm in, I'm in competition with the big growers. Every one of the little people doing their own things is in competition with the big commercial production people and they're losing customers if we're able to do it ourselves. So they're like, wait a minute, are they putting stuff in the feed to make my chickens not lay so that I have to go to the store and get some and then buy from them and putting, you know, the commercial idea of being a consumer, right? That's what they want you to be as a consumer. They don't want you to be a producer. So these things are, you know, in antithesis with one another. They're, they're at war with one another and they want to win the war. And then you look at all the uh, chicken farms and egg production farms that are being closed. You're also seeing fires, New Zealand, Connecticut, other things, just a lot of destruction along the way. And people are really starting to wonder. And here's one of the ones I want to bring up for you guys is people are connecting some dots going, wait a minute, some feed suppliers and some egg supplier stuff went down last fall. So what happened at the end of last year with our flock here? They started laying less. So some people are looking at when their egg production dropped and when a couple of these business arrangements just happened last year. And, and I'll tell you, I've been in shipping and receiving before. I've been in manufacturing plants. There is a supply often, so the second something happens on paper, it doesn't reflect in reality. I'm just gonna say that, you know, you gotta work through the stock you already have produced. It takes a while to implement things and do different stuff. But if you think about our chickens over all the years we've had chickens, what do we know about egg production? When does it reach its peak? And when does it reach its low? It reaches its peak in like summer, usually. Right, late and, spring, yeah. summer. And then it drops off heading into winter, usually. So, the thing I wanna share for especially newer poultry raisers, newer 
miniature egg production plants. Uh, newer homesteaders is just because there's probably a lot of stuff going on does not mean that your flock is compromised. You know what I mean? And if this is your first time doing stuff and you're like, oh wow, my egg production dropped way off months ago. Well, it, it will every year pretty much. Chickens, there's a daylight factor. They want a certain number of hours to really be uh, laying because if you think about the reproduction model, they're not gonna wanna be sitting you know, on eggs through the winter, hatching them out in a snowstorm and that type of stuff. We've done that before and we've let them do that but generally, you know, it's a spring summer type thing of having chicks, letting them, you know, live their life, get nice and healthy and big and strong before it heads into winter. So that's kind of the normal cycle of things. Egg production will fluctuate. As a chicken gets older, it's going to lay less or less frequently. And as the daylight hours get shorter, they're going to decrease production. So don't immediately um, just completely fret and freak out and think everything's over and people are poisoning your chickens and now everything's contaminated and horrible. I'm not saying there's not a level of that going on, but also what did we do recently that actually increased our egg production here on our homestead? Stopped feeding them layer pellets. So we used to buy layer pellets or layer crumbles. Um, some people like either one of those better for various reasons. We, uh, we make our decisions in there too, but the actual layer stuff is designed for having them lay. And what we did is we stopped giving them layer pelts. What did we switch to? Scratch grains. So scratch grains where it's primarily just seeds, right? Yeah. I mean, there's some busted up corn and stuff, but it's just a variety of seeds. And since we did that, they increased pretty well off of that. And of course, we're gonna be heading into spring production is going to be increasing anyway and um, we've got a lot you can probably hear some of them we have ducks turkeys guineas and and chickens and we've got kind of uh, quite a few of them all over the place and we really appreciate them reproducing if you guys are having ones I highly recommend having you know if you got big in a flock two roosters that way if one dies you still got one Thanks, Rooster, that's what I'm talking about. Um, but you're gonna wanna be able to reproduce. Um, we plan on hatching out a bunch of ducks, Muscovies this year, a bunch of guineas this year, a bunch of chickens this year. Getting that new generation, phasing out some of the older ones, where are they gonna go? To the freezer, probably. Yeah, where are they gonna go on their way there? What's that little building over there? The smokehouse. <laughs> to the smokehouse? And uh, actually when we do our meat chickens and stuff too, we plan on culling them all. We like to have big ones, you know, whole ones in the freezer, but I'm gonna run them all through the smokehouse first. That way they're already smoked, they're already cooked, and then we'll freeze them whole. And then when we pull them up, we just gotta reheat them. That makes the oven and the house smell amazing. And then also, um, in the event of a power outage, the food in there is already cooked. At least that portion of it will have whole cooked, smoked. Uh, chickens and what do you think about smoking meat? It's amazing. What do we have last? Uh, beef ribs and smokehouse burgers. And what did one of our friend's daughters say when she tried one of the smokehouse burgers? It was the best burger she ever had. Best burger she ever had. I can't take full credit because the smokehouse did like the whole thing. I just made the patty and put it in there but yeah. Smokehouse streamlines the uh, extra roosters, um, older hens, it makes it a lot easier to get rid of them. And uh, we have more incentive to do it. So, again, yes, there's a lot of stuff going on with chickens right now. Yeah, there's a lot of probably propaganda. There's probably a lot of mainstream media false information out there. There's probably a lot of discouragement. 
for you guys not to have them. And there's probably a lot of rules and regulations and different things. Plus, there's probably a lot of more under the table things to kind of uh, make it less effective for you to have your own stuff. That is going on. But just because your egg production dropped off a couple months ago does not necessarily mean everything's terrible, okay? That's gonna happen every year. Get your head right about that heading in, and then, you know, next year, you won't need to freak out if the same thing happens, and there's not a bunch of uh, incredible chicken news going on constantly on YouTube and other places. Hopefully that helps. We'll see you next time. Pinky out. Pop out.